how incredible is it that as a Oklahoma Sooner fan before the season, you can have expectations pretty high after what the team did the year before getting to the playoff two games from winning the national championship. And you know, you have so much back, um, especially offensively from the year before. And now your expectations at, before even entering Big 12 play uh, are incredibly lowered um, after losing to Houston in the opener and then on Saturday night, uh, getting your ass kicked by the Buckeyes. And that's what it was. It was just a plain ass kicking. And Ohio State deserves all the credit. And boy, was I wrong about, you know, the inexperienced part being a factor. These guys are <laughs> from Columbus might be just as good as the team last year. And in some areas, maybe even better. That's hard to fathom considering all that they lost to the NFL draft. And you only return six full-time starters out of 22 possible positions. And those guys from Columbus, they were not intimidated by the environment. They handled the weather delay better than the Sooners. And um, and I know what Oklahoma fans might be saying, well, thanks, Austin Kendall, for opening your mouth and giving Ohio State you know, bulletin board material. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can, you know, you can read the Internet. Um, and definitely Ohio State got the message about what Austin Kendall said about Ohio State's defense and how Baker Mayfield would tear Ohio State apart. And if Austin himself got into the game, how he would do the same thing. That's, but that's not what lost Oklahoma the game, the bulletin board material. Ohio State just fly out better. They're coached and much better athletes, much better players, faster, stronger um, players that you hope Pop Supes can get um, soon um, because it was, a, it was a talent mismatch. It was a big-time talent mismatch. And like I said, I was wrong about the inexperienced part. Um, if you got players that can play, if they're well coached, if they're focused, if they've got their game plan in play, doesn't matter whether you're playing in Columbus, you're playing in Norman, or you're playing at Reeves, you know, Public Park. Doesn't matter. You're probably going to win. And Ohio State took advantage of opportunities in, in the early going after, you know, Austin Cyber missed a makeable field goal. It was the beginning of what was going to happen. And in the beginning, Urban Meyer said, you know what? We don't have to score right away, but we're going to win the field position battle. And then that deep punt. Uh, where OU started from their own 10. And, and I'll talk about Joe Mixon in a second. Because I do, I, did, I do think Mixon played a good game, but he had that drop early um, when it could have been a real nice play. And OU goes three and out eventually. And Ohio State only has half the field, less than half of the football field to work with. And then on fourth down, Curtis Samuel does his part and gives Ohio State the early lead. Baker Mayfield, we know he's a hell of a quarterback. We know um, because he's proven that, proved it at Texas Tech, and he definitely uh, proved it last year um, with the fourth place finish in the Heisman and all the great highlight reels that he provided. That's not the same quarterback this year, and that's very obvious. And if he didn't learn his lesson from Houston, you know, take what the defense gives you. And I thought the biggest indication of this was on. Uh, third and three, the Sooners down seven, nothing but driving. And, you know, he's got a clear path for a first down. Just run it and slide and keep the chains moving. Instead, he gets greedy. And um, even though it's single coverage, he threw a pass that really he knew wasn't going to get caught. And then the next play, of course, all hell breaks loose. The deflected pass and Buckeyes get the pick six, which they're notorious for doing. That's what worried me. And it was a touchdown the other way. I think that's the 20th in Urban Meyer's uh, tenure at Ohio State, and it easily leads everybody else. You know, 20 TD interceptions. You're just like, wow, you're down 14 nothing, just like that. And then, and then the big play by Mixon on the kickoff return, and of course it shouldn't have counted because Mixon dropped the ball, um, just let the ball down before he crossed the goal line. Officials didn't see it, but that was one of the few highlights for Oklahoma on the positive side, them getting the score. Um, but looking at the offense, I thought, you know, Joe Mixon played a hell of a game. Um, it's obvious that this guy's going to play in the NFL, and he could leave at the end of this year. Even though he's a sophomore, he's been with the program for three years because he, he didn't play in year one. Uh, Mixon, I think last night, had eight or nine yards per carry, but only touched it nine times. And the way you look at it, if you if you can look at it in retrospect, um, other than, other than the opening possession, Samaj P. Ryan had a tough time getting yards because Ohio State was really focused on him. It seemed to me like the Buckeye defense, as well as they played, 
you know, Mixon probably gave them more problems than anybody. So, you know, why not give it to Mixon more? Football is a game of feel. If you know you got a hot guy, and in the case of uh, Joe Mixon, he was the one that was that really stood up the most positively for the Sooners. Give him the ball more often, however you can. Um, and he only gets nine rushes, and he still had I think you know 79, 81 yards rushing, something like that. So it would have been nice to have seen him get more touches. Um, but Baker Mayfield, getting back to him real quick, uh, he did not have a good night. Very easy to say. Um, just the decision making was very questionable. Um, the second interception that he threw, a poorly thrown ball was underthrown. And, you know, if it wasn't for an instant replay overturn later in the quarter, you know, Baker would have had three interceptions. Um, decision making just wasn't there. And then not just the throwing, but the but taking those quarterback sacks. And that was evident. You know, Sooners down 21 um, 7. You know, the, the play to A.D. Miller where he loses his footing on his own accord, by the way. And but you still have first and goal to three, should be able to get a touchdown. And then that first play on the series, Mayfield takes a sack. One of the worst things you could do. Now it makes it second and goal. And at this point, you know, you're not too optimistic if you're a center fan that they're going to get a touchdown and they have to settle for three. So so twice in the game, the opening drive, um, they don't get any points because of the cyber um, field goal that went clink off the upright, and then the other possession where they got inside the five and they have to settle for three. So potentially 14 points, and you only get three in that situation. Um, and like I said, the ground game wasn't enough. And the passing game, not even close. And you know, turnovers, which Ohio State made Oklahoma pay. Um, defensively, what a nightmarish game for, for the Sooners. I said in this game, I said it, they have to be able to contain the ground attack. And I think Ohio State went on a 290-yard rushing parade as far as yardage. Uh, JT Barrett had about... 80 yards rushing was way too much. And, of course, Barrett's arm um, ended up being a factor in this game. And I thought that, you know, I was worried, really worried about the senior defense trying to stop his running ability. And running-wise, for a quarterback, you know, about 70, 80 yards is pretty good. Um, but the, his throwing was accurate. Um, and there's no question Noah Brown had the heyday against uh, the corners. All four of his touchdowns came against the corners. Um, Parrish Cobb just right now isn't ready for the moment. Um, I know he's a freshman, uh, but you're put in there. The, you know, this is college football. This is Oklahoma. Um, it's one of the big-time programs in the country, and last night was one of the big-time games, and you know, he got abused last night. Um, he, he really did. Um, Makaya Quick, actually, I, I didn't think played that bad of a game. As a matter of fact, um, you know, I really kind of felt for him, as a matter of fact, because the, that touchdown that he gave up before half, and I know he's not turning around, but he's right there on Noah Brown. He's right there on Noah. And Brown, you know, catches um, an improbable pass and, of course, catches it right behind the back of Quick and stays in bounds at the same time. Incredible highlight reel, incredible um, catch from an incredible player to the tune of four TDs. But that was the dagger in the center's back because they had just, um, they just cut it to 11 at 28-17. And Ohio State didn't have much time. And keep in mind, the Buckeyes were out of timeouts, too. And they still didn't need much time to go downfield and get a get a pivotal seven points before halftime, making it 35-17. And that was that, that, that hurt so much. That, that, that hurt big time uh, for the Sooners. Because, you know, you're down 11, make adjustments, okay. And by the way, the adjustments for the Sooners defensively, not the best, okay. Um, you know, Ohio State gets the ball to start the second half. They get an early penalty on the drive, first and 15. What starts happening? The center defense gives up chunks of yardage. Five yards here, 10 yards there. First and 15, they give up 15 plus to Curtis Samuel, who had the game's first touchdown. It was it it was sad to watch the center defense just getting run gouged on that drive and, and throughout the game for that matter. Um, might have been one of those things where they knew it was coming, but the linebackers were ineffective. Um, Matt Romar didn't even play the game. Um, his concussion issues still have not gone away. Um, and this was not really the case to me of Baker Mayfield losing the game or the defense losing this game. This is, to me, a losing team. This was a losing team who was out-talented, out-coached, out-everything in this particular ballgame. When Ohio State, you notice when they got into the red zone, they were scoring touchdowns. 
The only time that didn't happen was early fourth quarter, and Urban Meyer, uh, trust me, contemplated going for it too. You know, he, he called a timeout, you know, um, and they were contemplating going for it and trying to really add to the score, but they ended up selling for the field goal. But by, that, but by that time, the game was already over early in the fourth quarter, and a lot of the fans had already started leaving. They had already started leaving the game. So for the Sooners, um, they got humbled pretty quick. Um, Ohio State's very legitimate, and they're going to be a factor uh, come playoff time. I know they have tough games to go at Wisconsin, at Michigan State later in the year, and, of course, against Jim Harbaugh's um, Wolverines to close out, but they get them at the horseshoe. Big thing I'm trying to tell you about Ohio State, though, is they're going to have a pretty good shot at running the table and winning the Big Ten and getting to the playoff and winning another national championship uh, for Urban Meyer. And in case you haven't figured it out just yet, Urban Meyer will continue to get five-star talent and guys that you know that we probably don't even know about right now that are ready to go in and play and do what Ohio State did two years ago and win a national championship. And by the way, he still has not lost a true road game since coaching Ohio State, which started back in 2012. So tip my hat to Ohio State. You know, I can't say enough for the good job they did. And for the Sooners, you can say back to the drawing board with no shit. <laughs> you have the bye week. ED need it? No shit. <laughs> uh, TCU's coming up October 1st. That's the Big 12 opener in Fort Worth. And as funny as it may seem, the Sooners can, can still have um, a, a terrific season. Obviously, it won't be entailed with the college football playoff, which was the ultimate goal. The Big 12 stinks. It's a, it's a, it's a terrible conference. Um, you know, you thought maybe Texas would enter Big 12 play undefeated, but they give up half a hundred and lose a track meet to uh, to Cal, lose to the Golden Bears for the second straight year, in case you missed it, uh, late last night. Um, and you probably did miss it, more than likely, because the game was very, very late. Um, it's kind of like the OU game was late. Um, Baylor and West Virginia right now are the only teams in the league that haven't lost a game. I mean, Baylor... Offensively still good, but they've been challenged defensively. They, they got issues there, even though they're still um, undefeated. And then West Virginia, I mean, they're undefeated right now, but they've only played twice, and it's been against lackluster competition. So we really don't know how good the Mountaineers are. And everybody else in the conference has lost at least once. Everybody else in the conference has lost at least one game. In the Sooners' case, they've lost two, barely hanging on in the AP top 25, you know, 25th, and they might drop out because they don't play this upcoming week in the coaches' poll. You're not going to find them in the top 25. They're out. So, Sooners dream of a national championship. Um, we knew it was going to be very difficult after the Houston loss, uh, but now it goes from uh, difficult to impossible. And we'll see if how they regroup. I believe me. I, I think the Sooners, talent-wise, can still win the Big 12. It's and there's there's no doubt too that the Sooners will not face anybody as good as Ohio State the rest of this regular season. So. From a physical perspective, it's probably pretty good because they had several guys that got beaten up last night. And yet you have to feel for Cody Ford, the offensive guard, because he was injured um, on the very first possession, leg injury, you know, um, had to be taken off the field. You need to feel for him. Um, but as far as physicality, they're not going to face anybody as good as Ohio State the rest of the season um, in terms of the regular season. It's a, it's a nine-game battle now, nine games to go. Um, I still think physically Oklahoma has the talent to win the Big 12. It's just going to be a question now as we wrap this up mentally. How do the Sooners react mentally? How do the coaches react mentally? That's the part that nobody knows. I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't figure out what's going to happen with the Sooners. They could end up running the table, or they can end up losing two or three more games. It's all going to be a matter if, if the Sooners give a damn about the rest of the season and try to win another conference title for Bob Stoops. Um, if the Sooners feel sorry for themselves because of Houston, and especially after last night's disaster against the Buckeyes, it's going to be a long, long year, but as if September wasn't long enough already. And we'll see if the Sooners can force any turnovers. No takeaway so far, and that's how the month of September is going to begin and end, but the Sooners having no takeaways. Well, but we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, Ohio State wins by three touchdowns and proves that Lack of experience can be overcome by overall talent, but also, too, by the desire to win and by the desire of their coach, Urban Meyer, to, again, put a quality product on the field 
and win no matter if it's at home or in this case if it's at Gaylord Memorial and Ohio State handled the moment better last night took advantage of the opportunities and made the Sooners pay for any mistakes or weaknesses that were exposed so congrats to Ohio State for the Sooners it's nine games to go the decision on whether or not they want this season to still be terrific uh, that's up to them. Boomer Sooner.